Ego is the enemy. This is a, a key idea when we talk about where philosophical schools overlap. No philosophical school says ego is really good. Try to cultivate ego. Be an egomaniac. No, hubris is like the main thing that literature has been warning us against for all time. This is Napoleon about to invade Russia. As you know, it did not end well. And then here's Hitler about to do the exact same thing. Here's the founder of WeWork about to destroy his company. Cyril Connolly said, whom the gods wish to destroy, they first call promising. And so it's, you know, pride goeth before the fall. When you think you're as good as you can be, it's true. You stop getting better. When you think the rules don't apply to you, this is where you run into trouble. MacArthur, I could show you a photo of MacArthur about to cross the Eula River. It is when we believe that we are suddenly invincible, that everything we do turns to gold, that we end up destroying ourselves. Ego destroys teams. This is Kyrie Irving and LeBron James. Kyrie Irving doesn't want LeBron James to come to Cleveland because he's going to have to share the ball. And then as they win a championship, he's thinking about being traded because LeBron is getting all the credit and the attention. And then he goes to Boston and destroys that team, and now he'll probably destroy the Nets too. Pat Riley says, the disease of me can destroy any winning team at any moment. Ego is the enemy. It's the enemy, as Epictetus said, because you can't learn that which you think you already know. Right? You can't be a part of a team if you think it's all about you. You can't deliver value or do a job for other people, which is what you guys do, which is what businesses do, if you think this is about you. No, what we are in the business of is service, of being of use, and, and ego is the enemy of that. You always stay a student. Again, as I was saying, it's impossible to learn that which you think you already know. And when you look at wisdom, this idea of wisdom, the wisest man who ever lived, according to the ancients, was Socrates. Why was Socrates considered so wise? Because Socrates was aware of his own ignorance, right? Socrates knew what he didn't know. Socrates believed other people knew more than him, and that's why he went around Athens asking all those questions. He probably asked too many questions, made some enemies along the way. But the point is, you can't learn that what you think you already know. So you decide, I'm always going to focus on what I don't know. If you think about the scientific method, it is based on the admission of ignorance. I don't know. I think X, but let's test. Right? And so you learn by following curiosity. You learn by accepting ignorance and moving forward from there. C.S. Lewis, talking about the Bible, he says, you know, wise as serpents and innocent as doves. You can't just be naive. You can't just be good. You also have to be aware of how the world operates. You have to be aware of the principles that the world operates. You know, it'd be nice if Machiavelli was wrong, but he's not. So you got to know what the forces or ideas that are sort of animating the world. So I would ask everyone in this room, who are you learning from, right? Not just your teachers, but what sort of active path of studying and education are you currently on? What questions are you asking? Who are you asking those questions to? Specifically, I'd say, what books are you reading? I love this quote from General Mattis. He says, if you haven't read hundreds of books, you're functionally illiterate. And he says this in Call Sign Chaos, which is a wonderful book, but he's saying human beings have been fighting on this planet and writing about it for a minimum of 5,000 years, right? And he says it's unconscionable, even criminal, for leaders to be learning by trial and error what has already been learned by other people. He says, if you're learning by trial and error, you're filling up body bags when you could just be reading books, right? And so if you haven't read hundreds of books, you're functionally illiterate. There have been midshipmen who have written books about their experiences. Whatever job you want in the armed forces, people have written about that. Smart people have written about it. People who f***ed it up have written about it, right? You can learn from all different types of people. You want to learn from cautionary tales. You want to learn from inspirations. You want to read how-to books. You want to read history books. You want to drink deeply from this hard-won store of knowledge. Tolstoy says, I cannot understand people who can live without communicating with the wisest people who ever lived on Earth. This is what books provide us. But Twain, as always, says it better. Those who do not read have no advantage over those who cannot read. If you are not reading, you are essentially illiterate, right? It doesn't matter that you can. It matters, are you doing it? I think books have been the best investment of my life, as I, was, as I was telling them at my table. My introduction to Stoicism came. I was at a conference like this, as uh, probably the exact same age as many of the midshipmen in this room. And I went up to the speaker afterwards, and I asked for a book recommendation. And he recommended that I read Epictetus, Stockdale's favorite. And I asked, uh, positive step number one, 
got the recommendation, then read the recommendation, right? Uh, this is the process by which we improve and get better. I have this phrase, ego is the enemy tattooed on my arm because ego is the enemy of wisdom. It's the enemy of learning. It's the enemy of being the best that you're capable of being. My book, Ego is the Enemy, is, is all about that very idea. Ego sucks us down like the law of gravity, as Cyril Connolly said. It prevents us from being successful. It destroys the success we have, and it makes the difficulties and adversities of life even harder. You can check out that number one best-selling book anywhere books are sold. You can also get a challenge coin version at the Daily Stoic store. Go to store.dailystoic.com. The ego sucks us down like the law of gravity with you everywhere you go. And just remember, ego is preventing you from being who you can be. Hey. Thanks for watching Daily Stoic. If you want to learn more about Stoicism, you can check out some of our other videos here. Subscribe, we'd really appreciate it. Keep learning, keep studying, and remember those four Stoic virtues, courage, justice, temperance, and wisdom.